In this week's video, we're going to return to video 119, which is our HP Pavilion DAY11AMB6E0 motherboard. You may remember, I spent a lot of time on this one. This had all the voltages looked okay, but when I pressed the power button, it would not power on correctly. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to draw out my own circuit diagram. I've been meaning to do this for a while uh, to create my own circuit template that I could upload with the videos so that all of you guys can download it, view all the voltages very quickly and give me your analysis of what you think is going on. Now you might ask the question, why do I need to draw the circuit again? I have the whole circuit in the schematic that I'll get from badcaps.net or somewhere like that. Well, I have three reasons why I want to draw out my own circuit diagrams. Number one, I'm not really happy to keep using the schematics that I've downloaded. I don't know if there will be you know, copyright issues with some of those in the future that might get a video pull. So that's reason number one. Number two, the original schematics are harder to follow. They have smaller bits of the circuit spread out on multiple pages. So you end up scrolling up and down to try and find what you're looking for. And I'm on, it doesn't come out great in the videos, I feel. And the third reason is that I find that the practice of drawing out the circuit again is helpful for uh, remembering how the circuit works and getting a full picture of the circuit board in your mind. So let me introduce you to version 1.0 of my circuit template. Now there was no point in me drawing up a template and not having any values in it so I've based this on the video 119 which I still haven't resolved. So what I intend is that for any of the difficult jobs and maybe some of the easier jobs as well I have an accompanying circuit diagram that people can download and look at all the values for diode mode readings and voltage readings themselves and offer their opinions. So let me show you how it works starting at the DC connector. There will be a link in the description below where you can download a copy of this yourself and if you haven't seen video 119 where I first attempted repair on this motherboard it might be worthwhile going back and viewing that before continuing with this video. Okay so let's start. At the DC connector jack, I measured 19.5 volts on pin 1 and I followed that down to the drain pins of PQ33, which was an input P-channel MOSFET. On the gate pin of that, I measured 17.9 volts, which we all agreed seemed to be way too high. However, when I jumpered from drain to source, it made no difference and I also replaced PQ33 with a known good P-channel MOSFET and the voltages all stayed the same. So I persisted on and I measured 19.45 volts at the source pins of PQ33, followed that down to the drain pin of PQ20. On the gate pin of PQ20 I measured 25.3 volts, this is an N-channel MOSFET so that voltage reading is good, that switches on PQ20 and we then measured 19.45 volts on the source which travel onto our current sense resistor PR145 and on the other side of the current sense resistor I also measured 19.45 volts. PQ39 right here represents the P-channel MOSFET that sits between the main power rail and the battery. Obviously we have no battery for this particular motherboard for video 119 so it's irrelevant but it will be relevant and we need to have this included on our template. But when our 19.45 volts comes through the second MOSFET through the current sense resistor this is then our main power rail and the way I'm representing this is this line right here is our main power rail and all of the secondary circuits are then plugged into it. Now after we had established that we had 19.45 volts on our main power rail, I then wanted to track down my 3.3 volts always on power and my 5 volts always on power. PU11 is an SY8208B and this IC is responsible for producing the LDO 3.3 volts and the higher current switched output 3.3 volts on this laptop. I measured on pin 8 and I found that it was 19.45 volts so it was getting the correct input and on pin 5 I measured 3.30 volts so it's getting the correct LDO 3.3 voltage on pin 5 also. We measured on pin 10 and in standby mode there was no voltage on pin 10. PU12 is another SY8208B. On this IC we measured 19.45 volts again on pin 8 on the input and on the LDO pin which in this configuration was pin 7 I measured 5.16 volts and similar to PU11 while in standby mode there was no voltage on pin 10. 
After establishing that our two LDO voltages, our 3.3 volts always on and our 5 volts always on were present, I then tracked my 3.3 volts down to the input pins of the Super I.O. and on all of the pins marked V, S, T, B, Y I measured 3.0 volts. On the schematic I found pin 107 was NBSWON1 hash which is where our power button connection comes in. I measured on pin 107 and I found it was 3.29 volts on this pin. At connection number 5 I found that we were also getting the same 3.29 volts there and when I grounded pin 6 to simulate the power button being pressed uh, the current draw overall from my DC power supply changed from 1 milliamp to 4 milliamps but very quickly went back to 1 milliamp as if it was trying to power on but couldn't for some reason. Next I located the bias IC and I established that there was 0.0, .0 volts on the VIN pin, pin number 8. Looking through the schematic I established that this bias IC should get its power from the higher current switch output of PU11 but as we established earlier there's 0 volts on pin 10 of PU11. The question was then asked should pin 10 have 3.3 volts even when the laptop is in standby? I never got a, a a definitive answer to that. I got conflicting sources from other videos as well. Some people say that this should have voltage at all times when the laptop is plugged in and some said that this should only come online when the power button is pressed. So the question then was posed, well why is the laptop not powering on? So what I wanted to check next was to check all of the secondary inductors and make sure there was no shorts anywhere on the motherboard. Now I'm representing the diode mode readings in blue. So anything that's measured in blue is in diode mode with all power disconnected. On inductor PL21 I measured 0 0.386. On PL20 I measured 0 0.295. On PL22 I measured 0 0.125, on PL16 I measured 0 0.194, on PL14 I measured 0 0.080 and on PL8 I measured 0 0.290. So none of them are showing up as being short. When I was doing a further visual inspection I found that one of the ICs connected on the 5 volt high current switched output from PU12, an IC called PU27, was blown. So I removed this completely, confirmed that there was no shorts but still the laptop wouldn't power on. So that's my first worked example of how I plan on having an accompanying circuit diagram with each of the repairs. Let me know what you think below. This is very much in its infancy. This is my first attempt at drawing a sort of a circuit template and I will need a template for the narrow voltage type circuits as well and maybe some way of getting in more detail on the battery management IC. So if you have any suggestions about this please post in the comments below. I also have to tackle the issue of where to store these. For the moment I'm going to put them in Google Drive in a public share and I'm going to put a link in the description down below where you can download this file from. Um, if that's not a good idea for any reason please post in the comments below because I don't want to build up a whole lot of files there only to find out that there's some reason that I shouldn't be using Google Drive or that there's something better. So please post that in the comments below if there's any issue that you see with me sharing those files. And that concludes my video for this week. This was pretty laborious to put together and I'm sure it's not going to be that interesting to watch as opposed to a regular repair. But it's something that I've been meaning to do because I do want to have a, an accompanying diagram with all of the values that people can take away with each of the repairs. So this is my first template. I'll probably need to put together a template for the narrow voltage type circuits as well and I will probably need to do a bit more on the battery management. Uh, I'll probably need to have a section here where I can include the pinouts of the battery management IC. But I think it's a good start. If you don't or if you have any comments negative or positive everything's welcome below in the comments. I would rather somebody tells me that you know something is not a good idea then I persist with it and waste a lot of time on it so your comments down below uh, are as always appreciated and I'll be back with a repair next week